And welcome back to Spotlight on Civility, a conversation. Joining me now are Henry Ford College President Russell Cavaluna and Henry Ford College Professor Anthony Perry. Thank you, gentlemen, for joining me today on this civility special. I'm going to begin with you, President Cavaluna. Uh, when you went to the Board of Trustees or to the faculty committee and said, hey, let's start a course on civility, what did they say to you? Well, they were excited because the truth is we're in the business of trying to give people skills to be successful in today's world. And unfortunately, what we're seeing is that civility is not either taught or understood. So if we can at the same time help folks deal with difficult questions through civility while also getting them on the path to a college credential, then that's two for one for us. And then what kind of college credit do they get? Right now we're, we're standing up a three credit course that will have the work that Nolan and Stephen have to build civility, but also develop ways to lead civil society, which will be a three credit course, but we're hopeful to get the kind of support from enrollment to stand up a broader course network. Sure. Uh, Professor Perry, what will this course look like if I'm a student, and I'm going way back to remember that, but if I'm walking into your class, what am I going to learn? We're going to focus on civility in conversations to uh, build a stronger and democratic society instead of demeaning people and uh, looking at as at politics as if it's a zero-sum game. I have to win, and therefore you have to lose, but how can we work together cooperatively to find solutions to our common interests. President Cavaluna, what is it that you think we're perhaps missing? I mean, we've always had partisanship in this country, uh, but it's gotten to a level now that I've never seen before. Uh, what change from those type of discourses we used to have that were civil to the type of discourses that we're now having or not having because we're even afraid to talk to each other. Yeah, I think the reason why we're afraid to talk to each other, Chuck, is because we started to sense and we started to follow at least some voices that say, I need to not only be right, I need to prove you're wrong and make you embarrassed about it. And so in that process, we've lost what is pivotal to a civil society and frankly a representative democracy, and that is the ability to listen, to try to understand. And so if we can help students, which we are trying to get ready for their role in our society, if we can help them to say, there really is no place for demeaning other people if you're going to work together as a society, we've got to start to show them there is an alternative way than demonizing the people who you don't agree with. If we step away from this tribalism and more of this, we can listen to each other, I think that's why we're not talking to each other most effectively, because we're trying to beat each other. Here, we can start to learn to listen to each other. So, Professor Perry, if I think back uh, when the founders were writing the Constitution, they had all sorts of ideological viewpoints, and they weren't always in sync, but they still managed to come up with a Constitution that has served this country pretty well and for a long period of time. But as you teach this course now, we're looking at a time when some people are saying, do away with the Constitution. How do you deal with those type of questions that may come into your classroom? Well, many times we look at the Constitution as if it, this process was, they came together, they all agreed, and, and it can't be further from the truth. Uh, they disagreed, and but they had a goal in mind, and the goal was to, ha to make a strong enough government that could survive and a lot of the issues that we're dealing with aren't I'm right and you're wrong, but how can we get to some place where we can get both wins out of this? So for instance, when we look at, at for instance, the Constitution, the, the Constitution has all these compromises in there. Why are there compromises? Because they couldn't agree and they had to move forward. They knew the, the alternative of not moving forward would destroy the opportunity for, for our nation to even begin, and uh, we never would have gotten to this point today. Final question, uh, and both of you can take a stab at it from your different perspectives. You're leading in this process from an academic level. Um, this is not something that you find on every campus in America. Do you think that that is going to be catching on more, not just in Metro Detroit, but all across the nation, if you're successful in what you're trying to do here? I'll start with you, Mr. President. We definitely hope so, because we have seen a need. In our educational systems, something isn't working. 
our citizenry has been provoked and incentivized to disagree with each other and demonize those we see as other than us, whether it's the way we look or worship or live. And we as an educational provider see it as pivotal that we start the conversation. That is to say that road, that road of demonizing each other leads to pain and problems. The other road of listening and communicating civilly leads to the prosperity that frankly, Chuck, this country has had that my immigrant father came to to be with. So we see this as existential and we're hoping that as soon as we start this curriculum, more and more individuals in the education world and in the industry and government see it as a path to help the next generation not make the mistakes that we see today. What we've been trying to do here is, is we bring people from multiple different perspectives together and we demystify these norms and values that we all have that are the same and we we show each other that you know our goals in society are very very similar however when we don't know each other and we don't talk to each other and we don't listen to each other then we it's really easy to divide so instead of dividing conquer as a, a classic colonial uh, term would be we are trying to unite and unite in the things that we can cooperate together with all right professor Anthony Perry of Henry Ford Community College and president of Henry Ford Community College, Russell Cavaluna, thank you so much for joining us for this very important discussion and we'll stay in touch with you. Thank you. And when we come back, the school district looking to stop the erosion of civility, what they're doing right now to change the course of conversations. Stay with us.